Assalamu alaikum, hürmetli studentler, hürmetli hamkasabalar. Benim ismim Zülfiyat Tuhtayevna Tuhtakhat Jaeva. Ben, e, benim asasi iştiyayım Uzbekistan Cahvan Tılar Üniversitesi. Filologiya fanlar namazı adı, Datsend. Bu Navai Üniversitesi deyimiz kısaca, Toshkent Navai namli davlat Uzbek tılı ve adabiyot üniversitesi de bu çildan bir ders beri yapma. Bugün e, video e, leksiyam leksikologiya faniye başlangıyam buladı. Okay. Uh, now I will continue in English for my dear students. Uh, this is the second lecture in modern English lexicology and it is devoted to lexicography as a tool and the result of lexicological research. You have the text of the lectures in Moodle, and I already sent uh, these uh, lectures to you by Telegram. You have the presentation copy also sent to you by Telegram. Now I will very quickly, skipping some of the slides, will summarize the essence of the lecture in, lexico in lexicography, okay? Well, the topics we will cover quite briefly will be history of English lexic lexicography, and history of American lexicography. We will talk about types and categories of dictionaries and reference books. Uh, we'll classify linguistic dictionaries into different types. And we will talk about how lexicographers compile their dictionaries. What are the basic issues to make a dictionary or a glossary or a thesaurus? You will have to know about these problems practically because during the uh, seminar uh, homeworks you will have to make sometimes glossaries or classify the vocabulary uh, presented to you by a task into different semantic fields or you know small glossaries if it is a bigger text etc. So these problems we will discuss. Lexicography as a science is uh, defined in many dictionaries uh, and then some of them very brief definition in some of them is given like a branch of linguistics. Another definition is theory and practice of compiling dictionaries or the activity and profession of writing dictionaries. Uh, the art of compiling dictionaries, I like this definition most of all, the art. So it's not just a physical activity, it is art. And the more dictionaries you look uh, through, you will see that every dictionary has re really some different, uh, different um, uh, design, different bias, different presentation, different way of presenting the vocabulary units, and the work is really artful, you know. Okay, so and of course lexicography is, can be an occupation if anybody asks a, lexico a lexicographer in which area do you work, you will say I work in lexicography and this will be a correct answer. Okay, so that means that the subject of le uh, lexicography is the practice and the theory of compiling dictionaries. Uh, pay attention to the word compiling. When we talk about dictionaries, we don't say writing dictionaries or making dictionaries. We use the word compiling because we don't write them. We compile them. We collect them. Collect these vocabulary units, these glosses or listives from different language sources, not from the heaven, right? So that's why we compile dictionaries. Okay. So, uh, Ameri English uh, lexicology has a very, very long story, of course. But the, uh, and dictionaries were made for different reasons. School teachers could make dictionaries for their uh, students. You know, I don't know, in families you might have, you know, they might have made some dictionaries. But the officially recognized uh, dictionary of, of English Latin uh, was published in Great Britain, in Norfolk in uh, 1440. That means the history of uh, English lexicography, if we, are, we have now a 21st century, and that was the middle 15th century. That means six centuries ago, the first dictionary was published. Okay. And there are periodization in English lexicography. There is a glossarization period when dictionaries just collected words and, and gave their explanations. And uh, 
uh, then descriptory period, prescriptory period. Prescriptory period means that you could not use a word differently than it was given in a dictionary. You know, there was even, there is a joke, or is it a joke, but uh, most people believe it was a real fact, when uh, during a session of a British parliament, one of the deputies, uh, one of the lords used some neologism, and the speaker of the parliament said, sorry, we can, you cannot use this word because it is not given in the dictionary. And the dictionary with a definite article was the dictionary by Samuel Jans Johnson, which was published, the first uh, volume of which was published in only in 1755, middle of the 18th century. Okay, now we have the scientific uh, period of lexicography, lots of researches, dissertations, and books are written about lexicography, and of course the subject of lexicography, the methods of research of lexicography are being specified, and that's why this modern period is called scientific period of lexi lexicography. Okay, so uh, to know the, about the evolution of English lexicography, I gave you uh, in slide six uh, about five or six uh, titles of English uh, lexi uh, of English dictionaries, which you can find in internet. If not the whole dictionary, but at least the description of it. In slide seven, I give you a photo of the first title, of the first uh, volume of Samuel Johnson's uh, dictionary, which was, as you see here, called Dictionary of the English Language. And then in smaller uh, words, you see, based on their history, based on illustrative material from modern writers, etc., etc. And this was volume one was uh, issued in 1755. Next slide shows you the portrait of Dr. Johnson and uh, some details of his uh, biography. Uh, and uh, you can again go to his um, website and uh, read his poems, read his articles, his stories, etc., etc. Well, at the next slides you see some photos, some photos of um, again of uh, Dr. Johnson, his uh, house, his memorial house. Uh, you see there his monument under which I have my photo taken. I visited this place in uh, uh, 2014 when I was there at Eston University and I couldn't help paying tribute to Dr. Johnson and visited his place and visited his bookstore. Um, and you have a, a, see a, a photo there of one of the streets of this uh, wonderful small traditional English city. Okay, and um, next we go to slide 13. Uh, on slide 13, I give you the best online dictionaries list. Again, you can just click on some of the names and go, you know, and see what uh, dictionary that is. So, uh, from all I've said, I'm sure you have drawn a conclusion that the subject matter of lexicography is dictionaries, linguistic dictionaries. But please keep in mind that dictionaries, diction, the word dictionary is very general in the English language. For us language learners, when we say dictionary, we often mean only uh, the language dictionaries, English, Uzbek, English, Russian, Russian, English, etc. Etymological dictionary or whatever. But dictionary is a more general, has a more general meaning. It's any reference book in English, any book, any inquiry book, it can be a dictionary for tourists, for example, with the names of the um, places of interest. It can be a dictionary of, of a city uh, site, uh, sites, or it can be a dictionary of, I don't know, anything. You know, so yellow pages can be called dictionary. Encyclopedia is called dictionary, although there is a difference between these dictionaries, okay? For us, language specialist, dictionary is a, a vocabulary book, okay? For others, uh, they can be thing books. So encyclopedias, reference books, or inquiry books, these all, these all are synonyms to, uh, sometimes can be guide books, even this word is used, I use it for my seminar book as guidebook to English seminars. So uh, different, but everything depends on uh, several criteria, the language used for this dictionary, uh, the material used in the dictionary, okay, or the user who we plan this dictionary for, Mm, for example, bilingual dictionaries are written in one language. They, they oh, sorry.
sorry, bilingual are written in two languages. These are translation languages. Uh, unilingual are written in one language, and they, they are explanatory dictionaries. Multilingual dictionaries also exist. Several languages, uh, material from several languages is given. OK, um, learner's dictionaries are mainly aimed at students because they give phonetic information, grammatical information. Translation dictionaries are different. So, and um, also, we can have general dictionaries where the whole vocabulary is attempted to fill in, to put in. Specialized dictionaries, they have only special um, just subsystems of the vocabulary, like phraseological dictionary. The best phraseological dictionary is uh, Alexander Vladimirovich Kunin's uh, English Russian phraseological dictionary. It's fantastic, it's classical dictionary. Uh, okay, then Galperin's English-Russian dictionary is very good. Mm, there is a very good dictionary by Karamatov, uh, which is uh, proverbs and sayings in English, Russian, and Uzbek. Uh, yes, so anyway, th there are many types of specialized dictionaries. And um, so uh, just for you to memorize the dictionary in its general use, uh, in its general meaning, means any inquiry book. But when we say English dictionary, it's clear that this is the dictionary of the English language. OK? All right. So um, uh, then uh, I think then this is all what I want to uh, say about the basic types. Uh, sorry, here some more. Yes, let's look at slide 17. Here, the list of types of dictionaries are given. Now we go to the problems, as I promised. And here in slide 18, you have just seven problems, which any lexicographer comes across. But they are much more, certainly. So it's, first of all, selection of vocabulary units. OK, list themes. What words you want to put? Do you want to put euphemisms? Would you like some to put into your dictionary slang words or obscene words? Do you want to include phraseological units as well or not? Do you want borrowed words to be there? So many, many questions arise when you, want, when you start thinking about your own dictionary. How you arrange the words, how you are going to set the entries, what the order will be, alphabetical or different. OK, how you are going to arrange the meanings of uh, all meanings. Do you want to give all meanings of the words in your dictionary or only the most frequently used uh, meanings? Because it's impossible. With, with polysemantic words, you cannot put all meanings of the word which are used today. Because words in their everyday use come across so many contexts. And every day, new metaphors and metonymies can be made with this word. So you have to somehow limit yourself with the, with the period. OK, again, the use of illustrative examples. OK, again, presentation of phonetic and grammatical. Do you want to write that the, the word uh, three, for example, is a noun, and in singular it is three, in plural it is trees, and this is its pronunciation, etc. If you want, fine. But if you don't want, you have to explain in your introduction to the dictionary that this is not your aim, that your aim is different. Again, you know, whether you include different types of remarks, stylistic, etymological, physiological, etc., etc. So that's why a good dictionary, which I mentioned in slide 20, a good dictionary, of course, should describe the composition of the English vocabulary, present various types of vocabulary units, that is, both morphemes and words and set expressions, of course. Then, created in the alphabetical order, you know, uh, hopefully to give the derivation of rela relations of list themes, present meanings in accordance, accordance with the frequency of their, um, of their use, present etymological data of the list theme so that we could understand why this word means that, although uh, from its outside uh, form it has nothing to do with the object or thing it denotes, OK, etc., etc. So uh, this, is, uh, this is what I mean. Our sort of claims to a good dictionary is, uh, represents quite a long, very long list. OK. And now, just very quickly, I want to mention the role of dictionary in foreign language teaching and learning. OK. So why and how can we use dictionary? Always, actually. 
Okay, it is used as a handbook for first of all for enriching our vocabulary. It's boring to listen to students who use, uh, who give in their answers only the words from A1, A2, or even B1 level. These are very, very low levels for the third year of this university, okay? So, uh, but in order to, to get hold of the B2 or C1, C2 uh, vocabulary list, you have to go there. You have to open it, you have to learn it, right? You have to enrich your vocabulary. And how else can you enrich it? Either by visiting the country of the language you study or by using dictionaries and reading literature and the reading fiction, fiction of course, in, in most cases. Okay, so a good dictionary advises on the choice of synonyms and antonyms. A good dictionary always checks the right pronunciation of the vocabulary units, and students should, should check it often, not now and then, but quite often, because unfortunately pronunciation is not really very good. At, uh, with some students, of, at least. Okay, so dictionary should consult us on derivational and compositional peculiarities of list themes. The dictionary should find out meanings in accordance with frequency and show these meanings to us. But at the same time, dictionary should give us the etymological characteristics of these words, okay? It should give functional and territorial variations. Uh, show us which words have stylistic value, which words are neutral, which words are slang, and which words are used as euphemism instead of obscene uh, vocabulary. Okay, and of course dictionaries give us great help when writing our research works, when writing diplomas, dissertations, whatever, course papers, yeah, I mean. The, the language analysis without dictionaries is, uh, costs nothing, actually. This is my opinion. And of course, dictionaries help with the translation work, you know. And um, I will show you now, at the, not now, but at the next slides, you will see uh, about whatever, 10 or 15 uh, dictionaries from my private library. And uh, you, will, you, you see from the photos even, they are very much and often use dictionaries, you know, because I work not only as a teacher, but as an interpreter and translator, and I need my dictionaries every time. They are like, uh, you know, like drug to me, you know, keeping me uh, on, the, on the surface of the, of the modern, uh, modern English, you know. So, and there, uh, I, I did not, you, you, you see them, I did not print out the slides with them, but you see them. You see there the dictionary of slang, you, you, you see the dictionary of 20th century's words, I love this dictionary. It shows uh, words which appeared in the 20th century by decades. Words from 1901 till 1910, words from 1911 till 1920, you know. This is a unique dictionary brought to me by my colleague from um, United States. And, um, you know, um, not only this one, but there also you have my, uh, a photo of my encyclopedia of, Brit of Britain, you have my um, uh, idioms dictionary, my Macmillan's dictionary of phrasal verbs, you see there some pocket dictionary, English American American English, or British American American British dictionary, etc, etc. So, and uh, here I want to uh, finalize my uh, video uh, lecture, and I just want to, you to pay attention to the last slide, to the pre-last slide before saying goodbye, uh, the words by Samuel Johnson, what he wrote uh, at the end uh, of his uh, lexicographic uh, work. I am not yet so lost in lexicography as to forget that words are the daughters of all earth, and that things are the sons of heaven. Language is the only instrument of science, and words are but the signs of ideas. I wish, however, that the instrument might be less apt to decay and that signs might be permanent, like things which they denote. So, as a true lexicographer, he wants the language not to change, just to be kept the way he has put it into his dictionary, you see? He wants the words uh, to be permanent, and he wants the things in nature be, uh, be uh, what he says? Signs be permanent and things and things be permanent. But things cannot be permanent. Life changes, language develops, history develops, and we need more and more new words. And these words need 
dictionaries. Thank you for your attention.